Hi everyone, thanks for the intro. So I'll be talking today about practical private, sorry. That's just the mic. Okay, I'll be talking today about practical order revealing encryption with limited leakage. This is joint work with uh, Nathan Chenette, Kevin Liu, Stephen Weiss. Okay, so to begin, I'll introduce the notion of order revealing encryption. This was a notion introduced by Bonet, Rekova, Louis, Sahai, Zan Zandri, and Zimmerman in EuroCrypto 2015. So an order revealing encryption scheme is a secret key encryption scheme where the client who holds a secret key is able to encrypt numbers, and he, the client can then send these numbers to a server, and what the server can do with these ciphertexts is it's able to basically compare them. So the ciphertext has a collection of, uh, the server has a collection of encryptions, and it basically, there is a publicly evaluatable function that allows the server to take two ciphertexts and determine the ordering on those ciphertexts. In particular, it allows the server to answer queries of the form, which value is greater, the number encrypted by CT1 or the value encrypted by CT2. Naturally, this has many applications in things like range queries or performing binary search on encrypted data. So just to uh, formalize this a little bit more, an order revealing, in an order revealing encryption scheme, given any two ciphertexts encrypting numbers x and y, there is a publicly evaluatable function that tells you exactly whether x is greater than y or not. So the ne natural next question is, we have this new primitive, how do we define a notion, a meaningful notion of security for this primitive? And the starting point, uh, as one might imagine, is the notion of semantic security by Goldwasser and Micali from 1984. So just to review, uh, this is a game-based definition between a challenger and an adversary. The challenger is given a bit zero or one that is trying to distinguish. These are going to parameterize two different worlds. And basically, at the beginning of the game, the challenger will sample a secret key for the encryption scheme, and the adversary can now make queries, chosen message queries. It submits two messages, M0 and M1, to the challenger from, drawn from the message space of the adversary's choosing. And the challenger will either give back an encryption of the left message, i.e. M0, or an encryption of the right message, M1. And now the adversary can repeatedly query the uh, challenger. And at the end of the game, the adversary needs to guess. Is it getting encryptions on the left or encryptions on the right? And this notion of semantic security says that no efficient adversary is able to figure out whether it's getting encryptions of left messages or right messages. Now, if we just take this definition and consider the order revealing encryption case, we immediately run into a problem. And the problem is that an adversary, given a publicly evaluatable comparison function, can trivially distinguish the left and right worlds, simply by sending encryptions that do not preserve the order. By using a public evaluation function, the adversary now learns whether he got encryptions of the left or encryptions of the right. So this is not uh, this, a reasonable security notion as stated. But it turns out, that if we impose a simple restriction, we can actually recover a meaningful and useful security notion, which is basically when the adversary submits pairs of messages on the left and right, if you consider the set of messages he submits on the left and the messages on the right, the ordering must be preserved. So therefore, if the adversary starts comparing ciphertexts, it's going to get the same response regardless of whether it's getting left encryptions or right encryptions. So otherwise, uh, the adversary is still free to uh, query the challenger on messages of its choosing. So roughly speaking, this says that the order of the left set of messages must be the same as the order of the right set. This is the notion of best possible semantic security in, uh, for an order revealing encryption scheme. And this was introduced by Podreva, uh, Shanet, Lee, and uh, O'Neill in 2009. Okay, so this is sort of the framework that we'll be working under for this talk. This is the notion of order revealing encryption. Before I get to our construction, I'll talk a little bit about existing approaches uh, for constructing order revealing encryption schemes. So on one end of the spectrum, we had this general primitive called general purpose multi-input functional encryption, which is quite a mouthful. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of it in this talk. But basically, this is a powerful new cryptographic primitive recently developed in the last two years that fully subsumes order revealing encryption. Order revealing encryption can be viewed as a special case of this super powerful cryptographic primitive. And not surprisingly, this also achieves best possible semantic security under the security notion I just described. Now, there has to be a catch, right? Otherwise, there would not be anything for us to do if we already solved this problem. And the, reason, and the catch is that this is horribly impractical. And in fact, this requires indistinguishability obfuscation of a PRF. So if you think indistinguishability obfuscation is not practical, well, now try applying that to a PRF. You get something orders of magnitude even less practical than that. So this is something that's sort of a nice theoretical result, saying that order revealing encryption exists if you believe I.O. exists, but it's not really a solution from a practical perspective. It's not something that we can go out and implement and use. 
Okay, so more recently in EuroCrypt of last year, uh, Bonet et al. Uh, developed a new solution for order revealing encryption that did not rely on indistinguishability obfuscation, but re relied on another very powerful cryptographic primitive called multilinear maps. I'm not going to go into the details here, but this was much more efficient than general purpose I.O., but, and it achieves best possible security. But unfortunately, uh, one, the security of multilinear maps is not currently very well understood. And in fact, if you look at the last couple of months, there has been numerous attacks on, multi on current multilinear map candidates that has raised a lot of doubts about the security of constructions that rely on these multilinear maps. And uh, on the other side, uh, these constructions, while it is more efficient than I.O., that is not saying too much. The efficiency of these still leaves a lot to be desired, and just as a point of uh, comparison, a typical ciphertext using under this scheme will be on the order of gigabytes, given current uh, multilinear map candidates. So this is, again, not something that people could use in practice if we want to do order-revealing encryption. So let's move to all the way to the other end of the spectrum, where we actually have something that can be used, can be implemented, and is practical, which is order-preserving encryption. This was what started uh, this whole line of work. So this was two results by Baudre et al. from 2009 and 2011. And in an order-preserving encryption, it's basically the same as an order-revealing encryption, except we impose an additional structural constraint on the ciphertext space, namely that the ciphertext space is numeric, and the comparison operation that you do on